everyone, my name's Lost and welcome back to Let's Game Maker. So this is part three um, and today we're going to deal with attacking from the player's perspective. So we're going to start damaging towers and stuff. We're not going to deal with death in this episode, just damage and attacking. Uh, so here I've just imported the attacking animation. You can find this down below in the description. Uh, and again, as per the last episode, I'm just creating, making the bounding box as tight as possible to the character. Uh, and I will just speed this up. So what we need to do now is we need to create a parent enemy. Uh, and this is going to be used for the enemy towers and obviously the enemy minions when we get to that point. Um, and this is how we're going to target the enemy, essentially. And yeah, just go ahead and set the tower to that. So the first thing that we need is a couple of new variables. We need to specify the animation attack. We need my target. Obviously gonna be the target that you know we're gonna attack and stuff like that. Attacking gonna specify whether we're attacking or not, obviously. There's a couple of changes in here that we need to do, but first let's add this. So first we're going to acquire the target and we're going to say instance position and we're going to, we're going to get the, the mouse coordinates and we're going to look for par, parent enemy. Now if we click the parent enemy, obviously you know with the right mouse button then that becomes the target. So if my target does not equal no one is what we're going for here, then attacking is going to be set to true. On the other hand, so else, attacking is obviously then just going to be false. Right, there's going to be some changes to this bit as well. Because currently, if you click um, outside of the lane, either up or down, you just it just doesn't move at all. So we're going to make it so that even if you click outside the, the lane, it will take you to the furthest point that the character can reach. Because that makes more sense, it's a bit more intuitive. So the way that we do that is we have to say um, if mouse y yep, is bigger, no that should be smaller, I think I fixed that in a second. Uh, because remember, the lower the number is, the higher on the screen you are. So you need to be, uh, your mouse y needs to be lower than 215 and it's the same with yeah there you go uh, and then we're just gonna say so that that will keep the player bound in the lane but you can still click outside of it and your character will move to the furthest point available and if you don't click outside the lane then the mouse X will you know the destination point will just be there now this image speed bit you don't actually have to do. Um, what I was going to do, because I've used more uh, sort of sub-images on the attacking animation, I was going to like vary these up a bit, the speeds, but this part you don't need to do. Uh, but I'm going to keep it in any, keep it in here anyway, just so that if you want to change the image speeds on any of them, in, for in particular reasons, to, then you can do that by all means. But you don't actually have to do this bit, so we're saying if attacking is true, then, uh, if move it, oh yeah, we also need to make sure movement's false because if we start attacking and moving's true, then I, I, we're going to be like gliding along the floor whilst attacking, and that's not gonna, that's not what we want. So let, we're checking for the target. We're saying if instance exists, my target. So if the target exists, then we're going to check the distance and make sure that we're super close to the target, because otherwise, we, what we don't want is to be damaging target from across the map so this will make sure that in order to damage the target we're right in front of it so yep sprite index we're going to change it to the anim attack we are going to oh the image speed yeah this is what I'm talking about so I wanted to make it a little bit faster um, I end up changing that to 0 0.4 so I might as well not have done it in the first place but don't worry about it we're gonna keep it just so you can you can then play with that if you want now you need to create the animation end 
and if you to get that you have to go into add in add a, sorry add event and then you go to other and then you click animation end and th this the code in here runs every time your animation finishes so we're going to say if sprite index is animation attack we'll code the damage in here but we do that shortly so right now I'm just making sure that um, things are working and to make sure that the image speeds correct and all that now I do find a problem with it I, I find that it is uh, far too slow and you'll see why in a moment I'll just speed this up Yeah, there you go. You see how slow that is? Um, even though it's got a higher image speed, and I will, ex I think I show you why in a sec. It is because no, that's the wrong place. Lost. So we need to actually be in the sprite, the sprite warrior attack. There we go. Well done, lost. And that needs to be sixty. So in the in the previous episode, I was saying I don't know if that's essential. Turns out it is. Let's continue. And there we go, that's but that's better, but that's far too fast. You know, that's way too quick. We'll just kill everything super quick, and we don't really want that. Uh, so yeah. And then, I'm just going to skip this, because I make it 0 0.5 here, and then I decide to make it 0 0.4, so I'm just going to skip ahead. And there we go. That's what I settle with. Though you can obviously settle whatever you want, you know. It will change the balance of the game though. Because the quicker you attack, the more damage you're gonna do in a quicker amount of time, if you see what I'm saying. So yeah. So now what we're gonna do is I noticed a problem, uh, and that is what if you stand close enough to the tower, then it essentially you don't get to see the projectile hitting you because it's immediately touching you so it just kind of disappears so the way that you fix that is we're just going to reduce the bounding the, the the box the collision mask to a very central location right in the middle so that you'll get to see it and it'll only disappear once the bounding box has hit you so let's just test that I will skip ahead and there we go we you can now see us being hit by the projectile smash it. Right, so now let's get the tower to have some health that we can actually damage here. So we're going to need a new variable called HP and yeah, just 100 will do. Uh, now the draw event, you need to say draw self so that the tower actually appears and then we're going to draw the health bar. Now I've already used the numbers in here, like I've already sorted them out so I'm going to fast forward this bit and then I'm going to let you just pause the video so you can look at the numbers and you'll just have to trust me that these are the ones that you want and there we go there's the health bar done uh, just feel free to pause that for a second if you need some time so now let's get damage done so we need to be in the animation end where we're going to apply the damage so when we end our attack like on the final frame of the animation that's when we're going to deal the damage. So first of all we need to make sure my target exists because if like this is for, this is future proofing so that when we have um, like the minions involved and all that sort of stuff um, there has to be a situation where oh sorry there can't be a situation where a minion kills your target and then the game you know our code is then saying my target no longer exists and then you're trying to take HP off something that doesn't exist the entire thing will just crash because you can't call an instance that isn't there, that doesn't exist. So it's, it's really important that, that you remember that. Because if, if your game's ever crashing and you're doing something like this, that's probably why. And I guess it might be hard to spot sometimes. And anyway, I'm just going to go for 0 0.5. I'm going to make the towers quite hard to kill. And if the uh, my target doesn't exist, we're going to set attack into false, the sprite index back to the anim idle. Uh, image index can go back to zero. Another thing you might want to do there is just set um, at the bottom there you can you can probably say my target equals no one. I haven't done that but to, on the safe side you, you could do that. It's probably a good idea to have done that. That's again the power of hindsight though. But yeah let's just test this real quick. I'll, I'll speed up so that we're at the tower. 
And yeah, there we go. We're damaging it. It's damaging us a lot faster. So yeah, there we go. That's pretty cool. Um, I think what I will do though is I, I want to change the colour of our health bars to green just so we can easily sort of determine who's on whose side like when we have the minions and stuff like that and that's very simple to do you just obviously change it here to green uh, and then we'll check it once more I'll just speed up until we're at the tower and then then we'll finish the episode anyway yeah I think that's a lot better uh, so next episode we're going to tackle death I'm going to draw a better tower I'm not that good at drawing if I'm honest but I'm okay I'll draw a better tower for us to use um, I'll, I'll make the projectile animated as well so that it's not just dull um, so yeah that, that'll be part of the next episode I'm not sure what else I'm going to put in the next episode but death and like the death animations will be there so yeah thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time.